So welcome to College Algebra. Last time we were talking about um, the order of operations, I think, was the very last thing we talked about. <coughs> Today is what, the 26th? <clears throat> so what is the acronym for the order of operations? PEMDAS. <clears throat> okay, so from grade school, You know it as PEMDAS. P E M D A S. That stands for what? Parentheses, exponents. Good. Okay, so uh, now I, I've got good news and bad news is that it's actually slightly different than. Um, you might remember from grade school. So we have to go over a slight difference. <clears throat> okay. So now the order is actually <clears throat> uh, P, E, and then both of these occur at the same time, M, D, and both of these occur at the same time, A, S. So <clears throat> these occur as a group. And then when you have a tie, ties are broken left to right. OK, and I'll, I'll explain what I mean by that. And, and same here. <clears throat> uh, no, actually, this is not, not quite right. Uh, let me think about this for just a second. A, S. Yes, left to right. Okay. So then, <clears throat> for example, on the homework, there is a question, on the online homework, I mean to say, there's a question that looks like this. Uh, 16 divide 4 multiply 4. Okay? And many of you probably got the answer incorrect the first go round. So, in the grade school reckoning, in the grade school reckoning, uh, there's, there's two operations here there's a multiply and a divide. Right. And in the grade school reckoning, what comes first? The multiply comes first. So if you do it in the grade school way, you might think that it should be uh, this multiply first so that it would be 16 divide 16 and so that the answer is 1. But this is actually <coughs> not right. It's incorrect. Uh, the way it actually works is that you have two operations. What, what two operations? Multiply and divide. So you, so you actually cannot, in the, cannot uh, tell directly which one is supposed to do. Now you have to break the tie. So which one needs to come first? The division needs to, be, needs to come first. Why does the division need to come first? Because it's further to the left. So <clears throat> we have an M, uh, no, we have a D, I mean to say, and we have an M. So these are, they're tied, but this one comes first because this one's further to the left. <clears throat> As a result, the correct answer is that you must do 16 divide 4 first and then multiply by 4. 
So if you do 16 divided by 4, it's 4. And then 4 multiplied by 4 is 16. <coughs> okay. Any question about this one? So good news and bad news, so, or just news anyway, is that um, th this is the order of operations. Okay, this is called a, a precedence listing, and th this is the, the true order. Uh, that being said, the, the exercises that I will give you in college algebra, and even what I, when I give to more advanced students, I, I, I never make it to where you have to remember this. I always, I always make it to where it's unambiguous, either by, usually by parenthesizing it, then you have no choice. <laughs> okay, but you should know that there's some things going on, especially if you need to type something into a computer. Because the way computers do it is P and then E, M or D, whichever comes, whichever is left most, and then ARS, whichever is left most. Good. So an example of the order of operations. So there's a question more or less just like this on your written homework. So something silly like this. Um, So something like this. And the instruction is that I want you to, um, I want you to show every intermediate step on that, on that homework exercise. So what I mean is that I want you to perform exactly one arithmetic operation per line. That's, that's what I mean, okay? The good news is that's, this is, on that exercise, that's the only time I'm going to ask you to do that. Yes? Um, you say one operation, but like, say that there's, like, with the minus 20 and the 4 minus 10, if, assuming that they were, like, in the same stage, right, and they're running the same So how about, how about I, I, I do this? 4 and times, uh, 20 times uh, 3. So now, now ask your question. Yeah, like, could, could we do both at once? No. Okay, one arithmetic operation per line. Okay, now do, so here's, here's, a, here's a comment. Wow, that's tedious to do, isn't it? Yes, of course it is. It's tedious. But you need to understand, in the first place, this is the only time I'm going to ask you to do it. W when we get past that exercise, I'm not going to ask you to do it that way anymore. By all means, please use your calculator. And, and do multiple steps per line. But the purpose of this is, is that many students get to college algebra and they think they actually know, they think they know the order of operations, but in fact they do not. So what I, what I need from every one of you is to, on every line, I want you to see exactly one operation. And a grader is going to look at it and I'm going to get notified anyone who messes it up because anyone who messes it up needs my personal attention immediately <laughs> so that it doesn't hurt you all semester long. And then once we get past that, we won't do this anymore. Okay? It's a, it's a diagnostic. Okay, so what is the first thing that must occur? 4 minus 10. Um, okay, so another comment, just so you can get used to the way I write things, is that these, these square parentheses, the real name for them is Bracket. Okay, uh, but no one can remember the name bracket. And the, the, the set, the set delimiters, the, the curly parentheses, those are actually called braces, <laughs> but no one can remember that. So I'll call these square parentheses and these round parentheses. Okay, and there is no distinction between a square parentheses and a round parentheses as far as the order of operations is concerned. So it doesn't make any difference. Uh, but the reason why I do that, I, I always write expressions like this. With different kinds of parentheses, because to me, at any rate, it seems more helpful to have different kinds of parentheses of different heights rather than this. Because then it's easier to spot which one matches with which one. Okay, so it's a, vi it's, it's a visual cue but it has no mathematical content. 
Okay. So why do we need to do 4 minus 10 first? Okay, but so is but so is this. It's double layered in parentheses. Okay, right. So the way it, the way it goes, because parentheses always come first, you look for the outermost pair of parentheses. So the outermost pair is this square pair. Okay, so whatever is in the square pair must happen first. So that means effectively that you can ignore, ignore everything outside of it. So now inside of the square parentheses, what now? Now we have a round pair of parentheses. So that means that, okay, we can ignore everything that's outside of the round pair of parentheses. And now there's only one operation. So that's what must occur first. Okay. I know this is boring and slow, but we'll get past it, I promise. Okay, so then negative 6 squared and plus 8 cubed times 5 minus 20 times 3. <clears throat> okay, now what? Right, so we have parentheses, square parentheses, and then inside of those square parentheses we have two operations. We have add 8 and we have square. So what, in the PEMDAS acronym, what is the squaring? Exponent. And what is this one? Addition. So which comes first? Exponent. I have a question. Yes? Why we cannot why we cannot do the turning times three right away? Why we do you can. You, that you can. It it would be fine to do it first, but you can only do one step at a time. One arithmetic operation per line. So what do we do to to two things at a time? Because the purpose of me asking you to do it this way is I'm assigning a grader to look at you doing one line at a time to okay, make. In the result, is it going to be the same? That's no. So your so your your question. I think your comment is that in the end, the answer to the question is a number, and you're on one level you're correct. This expression evaluates to a number, but you are incorrect because. The number is not what I'm grading. What's being graded is whether or not you are, you are following the order of operations. That's what's being graded. Okay? Like I said, I know this is tedious, but I'm, this is the only time I'm going to ask you to do it. Are you going to ask us to do that in the test too? Like write down every single If you want to get full credit in this course, you're probably going to have to show more work than you ever have in your life. Or you just give limited account and you expect us to write down like 10 pages or on? I, I can see that you may not be happy with the way the course is going. I'll be happy to talk with you after class. Okay. But the answer is, generally, that I'll show you how much work is required and it'll be quite clear. And if you don't show that work, you will not receive credit. <coughs> so, what's the first thing that must happen? Negative six, Negative 6 squared. So that's 36 plus 8. Okay, now what? <coughs> 36 plus 8. Which is 44. <clears throat> now what? 44 cubed, which is beyond my ability to, to do in my head anyway. So that would be 851, 84. And then times 5 minus 20 times 3. <coughs> okay, now what? Yeah, so then there's three operations. There's a multiply, a subtraction, and a multiply. So among those, which one has highest, highest precedence? The, the, multiply, the multiplies have higher precedence. 
and then among the multiplies, which one has the highest precedence? The, the one on the left. Okay, so then 8, 5, blah, 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 times 5. So that would be 4, 2, 5, 9, 20. And then minus 20 times 3. Okay, now what? 20 times 3. 4, 2, 5, 9, 20. Minus 60. <coughs> and now what? Subtract. So 4, 2, 5, and then, what is that, 8, 60? So, it, so is, this, is this tedious and awful and, and giving me a hand cramp? <laughs> yeah, it is, okay? But we're just going to do this one time. Because this is the thing, there's 300 people in college algebra, and it's very unlikely that it applies to anyone in particular, but it is a virtual certainty that of the 300 students taking college algebra, there's at least one that needs my personal attention on the order of operations. And they don't, they don't need it in 10 weeks, they need it next week. Okay. This isn't just to really punish the graders and make them go through everything too? Haze the graders? <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. but, but in the end, one of them has to do it. <laughs> it's terrible. Okay, <clears throat> good. Any questions about the order of operations? Okay. <clears throat> so the next thing that we need to go over, definition. Is scientific notation. <clears throat> so let x in R. So what is the meaning of that statement, let x in R? Yeah, so that's just a mathematician's way to say we're talking about a number here. Just any, any number. Could be positive, could be negative, could be zero. X is said to be written in scientific notation when you have expressed x in the following way. x is a multiplied by 10 to n, <coughs> where a must be greater or equal to 1, less than 10, and n must be an integer. Okay, so let's do a little bit of this. So for example, how about this number, 108.3? Is this number written in scientific notation? No, it is not. So one, one obvious reason is that it doesn't have the 10 thingy, right? It doesn't have a, you know, the 10 part. If you take my meaning. Uh, what's another reason? Um, right. It's got to be between 1 and 10. Okay. So the way that this is usually exp explained in grade school is you say, okay, this decimal point needs to have exactly one non-zero digit to its left. How many, how many digits does it have to its left? three, right? One, two, three. So we need to move this digit to the left to the last non-zero digit. Okay, so then, so one, two positions. So if we were to move that decimal point two places to the left, then the result would look like this. 1.083. So now, 
is is 108.3 equal to 1.083? No. no, obviously not. So what we need to do is we need to encode what does that mean to move the decimal place like that. So that is carried out by saying 10 to something. Multiply by 10 to something. 10 to what? 2. Why 2? Yeah, it's 2 because we moved 2 places to the left. Okay, any question about that one? Okay, how about how about uh, 0 0.000561? Uh, Is this number written in scientific notation? No. Okay, so then in order to get it right, we need, we need the decimal to be moved so there's exactly one non-zero digit to its left. So how do we have to move the decimal? To the right. So we need to move it one, two, three, four positions. If we move it four positions, then the new number is 5.61. So is the statement that I have written correct no. currently? Not currently, yes? Yeah, do the little arrow thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I the statement that is presently written, is it correct? No. no. Okay, so how do I make it correct? So times 10 to what? Negative 4. Negative 4. Why? So I think we're all okay with 4 because we had to move it 4 positions. I think we're okay with that much, but why negative? Yeah, because we were moving to the right. Notice the, the distinction between these two exercises is that moving the decimal place to the left made this exponent positive. Moving it, the decimal place to the right made this exponent negative. So uh, moved four places right. Any question about this one? Okay. Uh, so how about um, how about this number? One point uh, two seven. Is this written in scientific notation? No. It is not. How many requirements? are there for being written in scientific notation? Two. Oh, three. Two. Yeah, okay, it depends on how you count, but here's one, and here's another. Okay, so, so I kind of, I gave you a trap question, right? <laughs> so, so is this number between one and 10? Yes. yes. But have we written it as a number between one and 10 multiplied by 10 to an integer? No. no. So how many places do we need to move the decimal? Zero. Zero places. So the answer is 1.27 multiplied by 10 to zero. Because remember last time we talked about that, what is 10 to zero? One. It's one. Okay. Any question about this one? Okay. So for those of you who have taken a a chemistry course recently, or maybe you're even taking one now. Here's a number. So is it, is this number expressed in scientific notation? Yes. Because the number 6.02 is between 1 and 10, and 23 is an integer. Okay. Um, what is the name of this number? 
Avogadro's number. And every time I hear that, I think of avocado. <laughs> Avocado's number. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is a very important number in, in chemistry, and it, it, you know, it's less so important in physics, because that's a little further removed. Uh, but at any rate, Avogadro's number is the, the accounting number that you use to count how many things you have. And in chemistry, it's almost always molecules of whatever. Okay, uh, good. So this is Avogadro, Avogadro, Avogadro's number. I, I don't know if that's how you spell his name. I, I think so, I don't know. Uh, here's another number that's used in physics, but not in chemistry much. 1 times 10 to 80. What is 1 times 10 to 80? That's a very common... It's an important number among cosmologists, like Stephen Hawking. Who, no? Not the speed of light? It is. Okay, so I'll give you a hint. It's called Eddington's number. <laughs> yes. And it is, the, it is the approximate number of protons in the visible universe. Okay, so, so th just think about how big the universe is. It's a big place. Right? There's lots of stuff everywhere. And you, yeah, so you might think, that's it? That's all there, that there is? Just 10 to the 80? Well, understand that 10 to the 80, I if, you th if you think that 10 to the 80 is not that big, that's just because you haven't gotten attuned to just how big of a number this represents. So if, if you're dealing with a number in a, in, a, in a chemistry or a physics course or a college algebra course, and, th and it's like 10 to the 80, then there's no way we could be talking about cats, right? There are not 10 to 80 cats in the universe, right? Because surely each cat has at least one proton. And there's only 10 to the 80 protons. Right. So 10 to the 80 is a big number, really big. Okay. Uh, good. Any question about this? Okay. So one more thing about that till we go to the next topic. Uh, so for example, um, how about here's, here's a number the product of two numbers, uh, 5.34 times 10 to the 8, and then we'll multiply this uh, by mm, 2.99 times 10 to negative 3. So both of these numbers, both of these numbers are in scientific notation. And this exercise is to illustrate the other, one of the other main purposes of scientific notation, and that is that it's pretty easy to carry out the arithmetic involved. So this is, this is you can drop the parentheses because this, this is all multiplication, and multiplication is associative, so this is multiply, 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 multiply. And then multiplication is commutative, so we can commute this into the following order. We can say that this is... 5.34 multiplied by 2.99 and then multiplied by 10 to 8 multiplied by 10 to negative 3. And importantly, notice the tens, the 10 parts. They have the same base, so what do you do with exponents? You add them. So even without, the, uh, you, you don't need to write this step for those of you that are still reeling from <laughs> from having to write so many steps. But understand that when you multiply two numbers in scientific notation, you always add the exponents. So this would be five, oh, look at that. Yeah, yeah. How'd that happen? <laughs> a a righto. Is that what you call a, a typo that was written? I don't know. <clears throat> Two point nine nine times ten to five 
Now, the way this works in science, you know, when you're trying to just think about things n numerically, you can say, well, this number is about 5, this number is about 3, so the product is about 15, right? So this is about 15 times 10 to the 5. So when things are written in scientific notation, you can, al you can always figure out approximately how big it is just by inspection. So now this number just calculator, right? 5.34 times 2.99. That's 15.9666 and then multiplied by 10 to 5. So is this answer expressed in scientific notation? No. No. <laughs> Why not? Very good. So 1.59666, and the action of moving the decimal place one to the left did what? It increases the exponent. Yeah. Increases the exponent. Good. Any question about this one? So another common topic in science that we will not be covering is significant figures. So we're not doing that. Um, I, I'll leave that to your, to your science instructors. Any question about this? So we'll never be rounding, we'll just leave it how it is? Right. Correct. Other questions? Okay. <clears throat> so, the next thing. Section 1.3 is called radicals. Unfortunately, it's not quite as cool as it sounds. Uh, here's the definition of a radical. So let X be real and let N be, oops, let N be natural. So there's two definitions. One, <clears throat> the, the notation first when n is odd. What do I mean? So by, by odd, I mean uh, like 3 is odd. The notation y is equal to this. So this notation is new, at least to the class, probably not new to every one of you. So this is called the nth radical of x. This is logically equivalent. So th this thing I just wrote, double-sided arrow, stands for logical equivalence. That means that you could, I've written something and you can replace it with, the, with this other thing that I'm about to write, is equivalent to y to n is x. Those two statements have the exact same mathematical meaning. So if you were to see this one, you could substitute it with that one. Okay, so next, when n is even, y is the is the nth root of x is logically equivalent <coughs> to y to n is x so so far what i've written is exactly the same as immediately above so so far apparently it doesn't matter whether or not even n is even or odd but now i have to write one more thing in this box and this thing that I'm writing in a box that I'm writing in red and that I'm taking so much time to say is something that students leave off all of the time, that students overlook. So I'm taking class time to very carefully say it. And that is the following. So if y is a number, a real number, and if n is even, so let's consider a particular n that's even. How about 2? If y is a number, 
and you square it, then what is going to be the SIGN of the result? Positive or zero, right? Because if you square a positive thing, the result is still positive. And if you square a negative thing, it, it's, it's again positive. And if you square zero, it's zero. So x must be greater or equal to zero in the even case. So that is to say that we're dealing with these things called radicals. Even radicals, you can only put non-negative numbers into them. Odd radicals, you can put negative numbers into them. That's fine. Three is that this notation that you all know, I'm sure. So what, how, do you pronounce, how do you pronounce that out loud? Root x. Square root of x. So this is a radical. And notice that these ones are named, right? This is the nth radical, nth radical. This one doesn't have a name. So when you, when you say radical and you have not specified a name, then it is understood you're talking about a specific one. Which one? Two. So this is called the second radical. But no one says second radical, <laughs> right? Everyone says square root. Okay, and, and I'm going to say square root. But you need to understand that the square root is a radical, is the second radical. Okay? And for this reason right here, this is why you cannot compute the square root of a negative number. For this reason. So we have time for a 20 second exercise. What's the square root of 100? 10. Okay, so let me ask is the square root of 100 plus or minus 10? No. No, it is not. So, is 10 squared 100? Yes. Yes. Is negative 10 all squared 100? Yes. yes. Is negative 10 the square root of 100? No. No. The square root of a number is, is always non-negative. It's always non-negative. Okay, and we're going to do that a lot. So how about one last thing. Uh, how about how do you compute the fourth root of 81? So what's that? Three. Okay, good. So you, you know that it's three. Now if you wanted to do this with your calculator, you have a little button that looks like this. X blah. And on calculator speak, you could write this. Four, this button, and then 81, and your calculator would, would carry out that procedure for you. And we'll talk more about this on Monday. Have a nice Friday.